uh, some considerations on a possible limitation in within Nietzsche's own uh, will. Um, if we consider things in terms of Nietzsche's insistence that a resistance against the past, what's already happened, uh, necessity is very much wrong. It puts a limit on uh, his sense of will. Um, so, of uh, which um, in German, um, will it means uh, uh, want. It doesn't mean uh, so. Ich uh, will. Uh, Desight, the uh, Herrschen. Um, uh, this means uh, I want this hair, air shaft, this, this mastery over uh, Desight, over time. Uh, Schmackhaft, Schmackhaft. It's very tasty. Um, I want it, but if I say "ich um, werde die Zeit Herrschaft" or however, uh, um, then I say I will master uh, time or desire. Um, Will Verden turning um, seems to be more concrete than will in the sense of uh, uh, each will I, I want. I, I have the will um, uh, I, I, rather than uh, it shall be because that's what everything we take it for granted that, that that's how it will happen. Um, may come in in Nietzsche in this position of the, um, what Heidegger is calling Usia or being in the Aristotle sense as um, a presence, Gegenwart. So, Gegen. Against and vert, meaning uh, as it were, turned the face. I think even of um, Levinas, the face. Um, turned the face uh, against. Uh, Gegenwart um, presence uh, is a kind of distinct thought in the simple, uh, basic meaning of what the language means. Um, that, of course, is not the same as the vernacular meaning. Yet, it's not. Um, it's, it's, the claim is that it's always there tacitly um, giving expression to itself even when only uh, in the instincts, even when only in the flesh, even when not uh, brought to review of um, a narrative description of ourselves, a fictional description of ourselves. Um, these two forces uh, seem to Uh, work well as a comparison to Nietzsche's saying at the one time that the will to power a uh, will, will, will uh, Zermacht um, is is a will Zumacht but um, not sure but in any case uh, that this will to power 
is much limited by comparison um, to this power of uh, the past to have already decided things. Uh, so there's a kind of realism in the will to power notion. And then this corresponds to the notion that um, resentment, the French um, technical term, is a kind of um, attack of um, any uh, thing loved in the most profound way. So the metaphysics of Aristotle we think of the Sean Connery character and the um, uh, name of the rose when they say, um, tell us about, uh, I think, the, um, who's the actor? Chris, uh, uh, the, but anyway, the younger guy in the um, name of the rose in the film um, asks Sean Connery, the older uh, monk, about if he ever um, had any lapses from the um, um, investiture into the um, the ropes of a monk. And then um, he speaks of his love affairs, but the love affairs are Aristotle and um, Augustine and St. Thomas and so on. So in this sense, um, the highest... Uh, even beyond the intellectual love affair, the being um, actuated by not just the duty, not just because it's required in a class or something, but by love of that subject matter and wanting to know it, um, then has something even higher than it. And so we have a sort of degrees of metaphor and extending those um, degrees of metaphor um, to where we can see then, uh, think of uh, Plato's uh, drinking party or symposium, of course, and then uh, this agape or this love that's leading to the highest good, this um, thing that turns everything on, the um, uh, motivation or the motive force of it um, is what Nietzsche is saying. If you revolt against that, present them on, then um, you're attacking something that's the highest in uh, human beings. So the, um, this is the situation of kind of Nietzschean tragedy of the um, uh, devaluation of all values. Um, so I think Gegenwart as presence also stands in this way as an interpretation at the threshold which forces us not to investigate everything fully. So this is Heidegger's uh, criticism of the so-called ontotheology that it holds everything in uh, this usia, in this uh, gegenwart, in this face turning um, against the object, um, which doesn't allow for um, the full openness that Heidegger uh, wants to awaken. And so likewise, in Nietzsche, so far as Nietzsche is, un so Nietzsche has multiple levels of uh, consciousness and reflection, and there's a carousel moving around um, those one used to put um, slides in slide, so that one could give a visual um, account of oneself, which might be easier than a verbal account. Um, Nietzsche limits himself in this trope that he has, this repeated refrain in um, the um, one of the core parts of his uh, his, his saying, the sayings, um, remembering the Asperger's has said, Nietzsche has said everything in the reverse, therefore he said nothing. The Asperger's has written this great uh, biography of uh, Nietzsche, whereas Heidegger and, and Strauss both 
take specific um, teachings out of Nietzsche, just like um, Funk and likewise with Plato, either take teachings out of Plato or fall back and say these are the dialogues of Plato. Plato hasn't said, I say this, I say that. He's just shown people in discussion. Um, in this sense, Nietzsche has a trope within himself, which is a limit, and then he goes back. Perhaps this is, uh, I'll end this um, uh, investigation um, simply by saying that um, here we uh, have a horizon which is like the horizon Heidegger mentions when he tries to say he couldn't fulfill um, the final stages of his 1927 work because he couldn't go from the full ontological back to nothing. So likewise, back into, not back to nothing, but back to the um, ontic, back to the planet, ontic plenum, the uh, multiplicity of, of, of things extending uh, who knows how far. Um, but he always had to have, it's hard to get out of that hermeneutic uh, clutch. Um, but there's some bare awareness that maybe one could get out of it. Um, in this sense, I think there's, um, maybe Nietzsche had partial awareness of that, but not full awareness. Maybe Nietzsche's therefore a step, um, like a beautiful Weimar um, staircase um, towards uh, this Heideggerian position. And I think um, it's funny because if you look at when Nietzsche kind of went catatonic and went mad, there's like a gap between when he died and when he went mad. I think he died in 1900, but he was mad already maybe as much as 10 years before that. So I think um, Heidegger had put some significance on this change in the spirit through uh, the Germans producing um, a thinker, and therefore you could see an overlap possibly between Heidegger's uh, birth and Nietzsche's um, last phases. Um, such thoughts weren't um, outside Heidegger's uh, realm of considerations.